with multiple mouth parts displayed. Bone hard grappling hooks poised to pierce and immobilize prey. But the real nightmare remains unseen. Coiled, pent up aggression as long as an arm. And some specimens grow to twice the length of a man. Today, there is still much to discover on Madagascar. In the last 20 years, more than 600 new species have been found. The most elusive creature on the island is an animal that was thought to be extinct for two decades, only rediscovered in 1957. This is an eye eye. It leaps like a lemur. Has the long bushy tail of a fox. and gnarled spidery claws. Rodent-like incisors. Eyes that seem to look right through you. Giant floppy ears to amplify the smallest sounds. And a long middle finger with a sinister hook. The eye eye scours the dark forest for food. The elongated finger taps at the bark. Vibrations give away empty spaces where grubs and other prey hide. The long hooked digit leaves the defenseless larvae with no escape. Sharp incisors drill through bark with mechanical efficiency. The eye eye has evolved to fill the niche occupied elsewhere by woodpeckers. But its precise place in the evolutionary tree remains a mystery. Seen locally as a harbinger of death, few animals have inspired as many myths. Not even the Galapagos has an answer to this. Vampire bats are the only bats in the world that feed on blood. It's a master of echolocation and uses bouncing ultrasonic sound waves to locate its victim. It can fly, but it prefers to sneak up on its prey from the ground. 
Strong hind legs and wrists support its weight, while elongated thumbs steer and push it off the ground. It can tell where the warm blood runs close to the skin, thanks to heat sensors near its nose. Dinner is served. But this vampire doesn't simply gulp down his victim's blood. There are special forces at work. With the sharpest teeth in the animal kingdom, the vampire bat gently shears away the hairs of its victim and makes a small incision in the skin. The tongue slips along the funnel-shaped bottom lip, lapping up the blood. Fine microscopic grooves line the soft tissues in the mouth. The blood flows up these narrow tubes and pours into the throat of the bat. Thanks to a local anesthetic in the bat's spit, the victim doesn't feel a thing. And a blood thinner keeps the life liquid flowing. The horse has no idea the bat is there and the vampire feeds up to 30 minutes undisturbed. Without its blood fix every night, the bat will starve to death. But through super hearing, the vampire will recognize this horse's breathing, and tomorrow night he will return for more. This behemoth is the subject of myth and legend, with only a few having ever been seen in the wild. The Goliath bird-eating tarantula is a feared spider for good reason. It has a leg span of 11 inches and weighs over six ounces. It's so big, it feasts on mice and even birds. Retractable claws help the Goliath climb up any surface. When the day draws to an end, the jungle comes alive. and almost everything is on the Goliath's menu. Its eyes are small and ill-equipped for nighttime hunting, so it relies on its most fine-tuned sense, touch. Thousands of hairs along its body allow it to detect prey by feeling for vibrations. Just ahead is a gecko. The reptile seems unaware that it's just inches away from the world's biggest spider. As the Goliath's enormous fangs sink into the gecko, paralyzing venom is injected into its bloodstream. Very quickly, the gecko's organs shut down and the venom's enzymes start digesting it from the inside out. It's a gruesome way to die. 
But then again, the most fearsome spider in the world wouldn't have it any other way. At the bottom of the ocean dwells a bizarre looking creature. A fish so ancient it has remained unchanged for 300 million years. This is the hagfish. Its velvet smooth skin lacks scales and slithers along the ocean floor. It has a skull, but no spine. Tiny holes run along the sides of its wriggling body, some for breathing and some for sliming. But its most bizarre feature is its mouth. Like something out of an alien movie. This jawless maw is made for mincing up dead bodies. Multiple rows of sharp teeth are packed on two bony plates. With its single nostril, it picks up the sweet scent of death. A feast has arrived. It has no fins, but its paddle-like tail makes light work of swimming. The hagfish latches on and its mouth goes to work. Flesh is ripped from the carcass and shoved down its toothy throat. Soon, it's a frenzy of multiple mincing mouths. And to keep other hungry onlookers at bay, the hagfish excrete copious amounts of slime into the water. A shy shark snatches one, but ends up with a mouthful of snot instead. In minutes, the hagfish will strip the carcass to bone. It may be months before they find another meal like this. This is the fishing spider. This spiky-legged spider haunts fish pond residents the world over. Its good looks are enough to scare you to death. But it's its legs that are truly freaky. This bizarre arachnid not only walks on water, it can read the underwater world with its legs. Millions of tiny spikes detect vibrations on the water's surface. It can accurately judge where the movement is coming from, and even what prey item it is. A male lives in this section of the pond and it's full of food. His back legs anchor him to the shore, while his super-powered feet get to work. Every little vibration is assessed. The fish was just out of reach. Walking on water is one thing, but this incredible spider can also breathe underwater. 
The waterproof hairs around the spider's abdomen create an air bubble. Its lungs look like the stacked pages of a book and draw the oxygen from the bubble. This incredible adaptation allows the fishing spider to breathe underwater. The fish may have been scared out of the spider's hunting zone, but now they're in the shallows. The fishing spider injects paralyzing venom into the fish, which slowly turns its insides into a nutritious soup. This prize catch is something worth bragging about. This hairy frogfish has better luck. She's an expectant mother and has more at stake than just an empty stomach. She tucks behind the coral and waits. mouth balloons to 12 times its original size, creating a vacuum to suck in the prey. The entire process takes just one six thousandth of a second. Far too quick for the prey to react. It's the fastest bite in the animal kingdom. This is an assassin bug. To us, it's easy enough to spot because it moves. To its prey, that's irrelevant because it smells like one of their number. The assassin sucks its victims dry and glues their empty husks onto its back. This one is already carrying at least 20 corpses. Its irregular shape makes it hard for other predators to spot it and makes it virtually invisible to its prey, ants. It enters this ant colony unchallenged. Its coat of ant corpses masks its own odor. To the ants, it smells like one of their own, and that's what matters. They'll even run straight over the top of it. The assassin simply takes an ant whenever it feels hungry. And the body of each victim then adds to its disguise. A spider wasp. The wasp feeds on pollen and nectar, but she hunts as well, and wolf spiders are a favorite quarry. The wasp is relentless. The spider can run, but it 
cannot hide. With one venomous bite, the wasp renders the spider immobile. It's alive, but no longer kicking. While its zombified victim awaits its fate, the wasp prepares a true chamber of horrors. She'll drag the paralyzed spider into the hole, lay a single egg on her victim's abdomen, then seal up the entrance. When the egg hatches, the young wasp will feed on the zombie spider. But there's a wrinkle in her plan. Ants have spotted the paralyzed spider, and they have hungry little mouths to feed back in their own nest. The spider wasp's underground nursery is finally complete, but she's too late to stop the thieves. The spider wasp searches frantically for the missing spider. She's so agitated, she makes a fatal misstep. The hunter becomes the hunted. Sucked into the lair of the antlion as one brute finishes off another. wasteland. Its savage ruler lies hidden beneath the sand, its presence revealed only by catapulted corpses, the grisly remains of discarded victims, empty shells of insects murdered and tossed aside. But by what? By this. The antlion, the spawn of the netherworld. This is its lair. Digging backwards in the sand, the antlion creates a funnel-shaped burrow. Then it buries itself to lie in wait for its next victim. The ants have no idea that a trap lies below. A firebug loses its grip on the sand and slips down the funnel into waiting jaws. Once he pulls his catch into the sand, the antlion injects it with poison and digestive enzymes and sucks out its liquefied guts. Then it throws the empty bug shell up, up and away. If the victims don't slide down on their own, the antlion launches an assault. Struggling only makes matters worse. Assassin reaches up to make the kill, injecting its toxic cocktail. Resistance is futile. Once you've fallen into the lion's den, there's only one way for this horror story to end. the only arachnid known to live exclusively underwater. It has no fins or gills, but this amazing spider doesn't need them. It builds its very own submarine air supply. This bubble is its lifeline, its homemade scuba tank. 
to construct the bubble, this male swims to the surface and pops his butt into the air. Like the fishing spider, the air bubble around his abdomen allows him to breathe through his booked lungs. This odd, crab-like swimmer collects several bubbles from the surface to create a large reservoir of oxygen. This is the spider's sanctuary, where it will feed and rest. Thanks to evolution, it has been given the tools to conquer an entire ecosystem. From a distance, it looks like an ordinary wild hog. Up close, it's a walking dental disaster. Its real name is Bobby Rusa, and it is found in the jungles of Indonesia. You'd also be shy if you looked like this. The females are plainly pig-like. But as male Bobby Rusas mature, their upper canines rotate in the jaw, pushing through the roof of the snout in the opposite direction. Such a radical adaptation must have an important purpose. But scientists aren't sure what the real point is. The fang face is an omnivore, but his teeth aren't used for killing prey or even digging up roots. The fangs are brittle and break easily. So brittle that when males fight, they box with their forelegs and keep their teeth out of the way. But these teeth have an even more sinister twist. They will never stop growing. In old males, they can curl towards the forehead, even piercing the skull. The one thing scientists do know is that bigger males with longer fangs attract more mates. These ladies have interesting taste in partners. Imagine having to deal with a grumpy male with a tooth growing into his skull. Mercury, the black mamba, has found the ideal snake nursery. But this is not a private birthing ward. This custom-built termite mound is rigged with surveillance equipment and delicate lighting. She will be depositing her precious cargo live on television. The vigil at Mercury's nest site continues for four long days and nights. And then the true purpose of her mission emerges. One by one, they appear. Not hard like a bird's egg, but soft, pliable, and leathery to the touch. The parchment-like eggshell is permeable, allowing gases in and out so the embryo can breathe inside. Over the next 90 days, the eggs will continue to swell in size and weight while the embryos develop. <laughs> 24 hours later, exhausted, Mercury has deposited all of her 14 eggs. It's now time for her to restore her depleted energy, drink fresh water, hunt, and survive. Safe in their secret chamber, 14 new super snakes are coming to life.
three moons have waxed and waned since Mercury laid her eggs. Inside each of the leathery shells, a miniature mamba has been rapidly developing. The embryo extracts calcium from the shell and nutrition from the yolk sac and lengthens rapidly, gradually resembling a long, slender snake. Three months later, a new generation of mambas is ready to enter the world. The young snakes don't exit immediately, preferring to move around in the egg and absorb the remainder of the egg yolk, which will sustain them until their first kill. Deadly enough to kill a man just minutes after birth. One by one, the baby mambas emerge from their nursery. 20 inches long, independent, and already capable of catching prey the size of a small rat. Deep on the ocean floor, the sand striker, or bobbit worm, waits, with multiple mouth parts displayed, bone-hard grappling hooks, poised to pierce and immobilize prey. But the real nightmare remains unseen. Coiled, pent-up aggression as long as an arm. And some specimens grow to twice the length of a man. As night falls, many sand strikers emerge to feast. It's a bad neighborhood to hang out in. But fish are fast, and the sand strikers are feeding blind. They don't have eyes or a brain. They react only if one of their antennae is triggered or if a shadow lingers. Patience. Gotcha. And the sand strikers are just getting started. It's time for the main course. Underground, there's plenty of storage space. Anything on the seabed is fair game. Even spikes and venom are no match. in seconds. Massacre over. The strikers withdraw to digest. 
until the next time.